Hey everybody, welcome back to another evening at LDRS Creative. We're in studio. I think it's Thursday night. It's Thursday night, right? Oops, I'm hearing too many things. Was that mine or yours that I'm hearing? Okay, well I just turned mine. Mine was already down, so it must have been yours. Sorry. Anyway, we are in studio um, Thursday night for our craft along. Um, in case uh, nobody saw the announcement that we put out, um, we have determined that Tuesdays are definitely not going to work for me. <laughs> it's just too difficult. Um, I've got too many things that happen in the beginning of the week. And so, um, and, and what we really wanted to do was settle in on one day, either Tuesday or Thursday, so that we could guarantee you guys when we were going to be here, unless of course there's something out of our control. But anyway, it is going to be Thursdays every week, um, unless you're otherwise notified, like, you know, whatever, something serious illness, God forbid, vacation, something like that. We don't take those, but you never know. Um, anyway, but it's going to be Thursdays, uh, from here on out and it's going to be at 7 PM Eastern time. So, um, anyway, let's see, what can I tell you about today? My little, I, I know what I want to tell you just in case I always like to try every once in a while to share like one of my favorite things as though I'm Oprah or something and anybody cares what my favorite thing is. Um, but there is a, I, let me tell you a quick little, quick little story. I went to a concert. It was a John Mellencamp concert. Alan swears it wasn't with him, although I think it was with him. <laughs> what? Some other guy you went to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not me. So anyway, this was years ago. Went to a John Mellencamp concert and um and the opening act was an artist I had never heard of. She's a she's a Canadian artist and her name is Amanda Marshall. And this was probably, oh my gosh, I'm guessing 15 years ago, something like that. Um, what? What? It had to be 25 years ago. No, it wasn't before we met. All right, yes. we, we will have this because discussion. Because he listened to her CD on the way to work oh 25 years ago. Now you know why he doesn't have a mic. <laughs> Um, anyway, so Amanda Marshall is her name, and I, I'll tell you, she was on stage, and as much as I love John Mellencamp, I didn't want her to end. I didn't even care if he came out on the stage. I have been in love with her music ever since, and I go through phases. Like, I will listen to an artist for, like, I don't know, two, three months, and then I go, all right, time for something new. And certain artists keep coming around again in my rotation, and she's one of them. And so she's what I'm, I'm listening to her music like crazy right now. So if anybody is looking for um, some new music, <clears throat> it's, it's not new music. I don't think she's recorded anything in a while, but she's got a lot of stuff out there. And um, her name is Amanda Marshall, and she is phenomenal. If you'd like a female voice that really belts her music out, she's great. All right. That is my favorite thing for the, for the night. Um, so here's another little story for you. I came up into the studio. How many of you guys, raise your hands. How many of you guys sometimes come? How are we going to know? I know. <laughs> but raise your hand. How many of you go into your craft space, wherever it is, and you sit down? I mean, this is, this is like, you know, you go to, you go to the mall and, and you don't have any money in your, in your purse. You, you have no money. You're just wasting time and you see everything that you want. You try things on, they fit, you can't get them because you don't have any money. But then the other times when you've got money in your pocket, you go and you can't find a doggone thing. And that was my day today because that's just how it works. Came up into my studio, I had time, I was excited. I'm like, I am going to make something fun. This is what I want to work with. And I think I spent two hours and I, and I, and I have a basket full of, of things that I'm just very dissatisfied with. <laughs> so nothing was working for me today. So I, I sat there going, all right, well, I've got to go live tonight. What am I going to do? And I thought, you know what, Let, let's just really simplify. And that's what I did. So it's stamping, coloring, die cutting. And I know that seems like a lot, but it's not. I've done the simplest. I've really pared it down to the simplest form of, of all three of those. So that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you where I landed. I ended up picking up different product than what I originally started with. I'm going to be working with um, uh, the Hippopotamus for Christmas, which is one of my favorite songs uh, for the holidays because I love quirky, whimsical, fun little things. 
um, that I, in, for the holidays just to listen to. And so uh, that's a favorite song of mine. If you haven't, if you've never heard of it, look it up. It is the most darling thing. So we're going to switch cameras and we're going to get started. So Mr. Hunt, camera two. All right, here we go. As you can tell I used it. <laughs> it is already loved. Um, and if I haven't said so already, welcome. Good to see you guys here. Yay. I'm assuming I'm not here alone. I might be. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Alan wouldn't tell me. So. Will, Will is out there. Will's out there. Hey, Will. <laughs> okay, so we have Hippopotamus for Christmas. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. It's the cutest, cutest song. And it's all about this little kid who wants a hippopotamus for Christmas. And it, it's the, just the most darling thing. So I, I talked with, um, I came up with this idea, talked with, um, you know, with, with our, our, our illustration team and said, you know, I, I really want a hippopotamus set and I want it to be playful. I want little kids playing with the hippos. Um, and they went to town and this is where we landed. It is the most darling thing. So we've actually got a little tree in here. Emily is the one who drew this up. That's her name, Emily. And she's just phenomenal. She actually does our pocket pills too. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is, this is a set she did. It's a four by eight set. You get 13 stamps in total. So we get, we, we snuck two sentiments in here. One of them says hippo holidays and the other says I'm hippopotamusing you. Um, you can do so many things with these. We've got, this one has this little, could be a boy or a girl, um, hugging a hippopotamus. We have, this one is a little girl. She's actually um, shaking candy out of her stocking into the hippo's mouth. Um, Alan, you want to zoom in on to three here for this? There we go. That's a little bit better. You know what? Let me turn them over. That's an easier way to see it. There we go. So here she is shaking candy out of her stocking into that hippo's mouth. Um, you can see how darling that tree is now. Um, this one has this little girl just kind of snuggling up and taking a nap with her hippo. Um, these two were designed there so they could be playing together, dancing. Um, this hippo could be, if you put this little girl up above the hippo, the hippo could be kind of tossing her up in the air, just kind of bouncing her and playing. Um, and then we have a little boy and a little girl over here with a hippo that is sitting. So you can mix these up and have as many hippos and as many children as you want in your scene. Um, and then we, of course, have the coordinating dies. And on the back, we have given you a map of, um, you know, showing you which die goes with which uh, stamp. So that is them, and that's what I played with. Um, let's see. Uh, Dieta is asking, any new pirouette sets coming out? Um, not right now, but we do have some in the works, I will tell you that. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but we do, we do have some of those in the works. Um, let's see. So I ended up grabbing those and I don't have a package set, but I ended up grabbing these because this is my go-to. These are the, um, it's three, three dies all together. These are the A2 stitched layered card toppers and they work beautifully. So um, this is a go-to whenever I'm going to layer uh, any of, you know, my images or anything on an A2 card, this is where I go. It gives me really simple but beautiful stitching and it makes sure that I have perfect measurements for layering. And this way I don't have to line things up and measure on my paper trimmer. It's just one, two, three, and there we go. So A2 stitched layered card toppers. Uh, Alan's going to be using these today. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> Okay, so here's what I mean by easy, all right? I literally took the smallest of my A2 layered card toppers. I grabbed a piece, apparently a dirty piece. Yay, 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 yay. Alan, you do me a favor. I have stuff I need to erase on here. Um, do I have my eraser over here? No, 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 not that one. It's the eraser over there. Sorry about my arm. No, no, no. This is the one I like to use. This is my mono sand eraser. It looks like I have it. It's a little bit dirty. I got it dirty. If you guys don't have one of these, get one. This is the uh, sand eraser mono. It's by uh, Mono Sand Eraser by Tombow. And I, it's the one for ink. Love this thing. We need to get some of these and put these in the store because this is just that's like that's like milk and bread. That's a staple item. I'll tell the lady who orders stuff. You can tell the lady who orders stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I actually have an order ready to go from. The distributor that I order stuff from, but a lot of the stuff I'm ordering is out of stock. 
And so it won't even ship and they'll ship me like one thing that is on my list and I don't want them to ship the one thing because <laughs> yeah. then, it, you know, it's anyway. So uh, things will be in stock shortly. So Did you want to tell what? people what they can use those for like if they what? feel bad about covering a whole <laughs> sheet of paper? Oh, that's a good point. Why don't you give me one of those, Alan? Because we've had a lot of comments about this. Just, just give me one sheet of paper. Oh, well, yeah, like I can find one sheet. Well, just open up a pack and give me a sheet of paper and make it snappy. All right. <laughs> Alan, any sheet, honey. There we go. Okay. I've had a lot of people comment on this where, um, you know, like when I'm doing classes and stuff, a lot of people will ask because I will, I will die cut, um, let's say I'll, I'll cut a piece that is this A2 size. All right. And then I will come in and I'll layer this piece over the top of it and they'll go wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute you covered up all that beautiful paper i could have used that for something else and they're right they're absolutely right so Anna wanted me to point out with a set like this where you have you know like the where, where they're layering dies if you cut out the center of that with one of the dies then you you then have that piece of paper that you can use on another project and then this one would still fit over it perfectly. And you could just layer that right into that, that space. So um, these dies are not only fantastic for layering, but they're fantastic for cutting little window pieces out of your pattern paper um, so that you can make it go farther. So that's a little, that's a little Allen hunt tip. Okay. So anyway, by making this easy, I just took some of my Nina Classic Crest uh, cardstock. 110 pounds, and I cut it out with the smallest die in the A2 stitch layer card toppers. I went ahead and I stamped the tree, and I stamped it in my very apparently dirty um, hybrid ink. This is my Raven uh, Raven hybrid ink. Uh, hybrid ink means that I can use it with just about any um, craft medium. So I can color now with my Copics. I if I'm stamping on watercolor paper. I can paint it with watercolors. I can stamp on all kinds of different things, glossy surfaces and so on, fabrics and everything. So it's kind of, it's your go-to ink. So my point is I stamped it. I offset it just a little bit to the left because I want to be able to bring my little um, hippo here, hugging this little boy here. And then I went ahead and I stamped the star here just in case I want to pop it up on foam and put it right here in the front. Um, of the one here and I'm noticing I hit black on here too. I must see this is why I put my stuff in a little bag and I didn't do it this time so I got ink somewhere from somewhere probably I don't know where I got it but anyway so this is very simplified so I went ahead and I colored up I don't need that I went ahead and I already colored up these two little characters and I thought it would be fun to go ahead and color this one up for you so are we already on camera three Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab some colors. The first thing I'm going to color up is going to be that tree. And so I've actually got, I don't know how this is going to work. I haven't, here's what I did. This is how I test colors. This is how I decide what I'm going to use. Um, I went ahead and I grabbed four colors. So I have G20. I can't really put this up in the camera because it's not on autofocus. So G20. Um, then I have YG06, and I'll show you these caps as we go, YG07 and YG09. So you can see I colored with all four of those just to see if I was going to like them together. I may or may not use all of those. We'll see. And then I kind of did, did that same thing with the rest. That's really how I go. This is how I did the skin and the hair a little bit, just to see what I like and what I don't like. So I'm going to start with G. 2-0 or G20 and I'm just going to kind of fill in with my lightest green here just to get a little color down. I'm going to color in wherever I'm going to have green. I don't care if it's perfect. I'm just trying to get some color down. It gives me a little, of a, little bit of a base. This is kind of, looks kind of yellowy. It's a very, very light, light color. It's a great one for highlights. And I always start with my lightest color. 
that's not right. It's not wrong. It's just how I do it. If you're more comfortable going dark to light, then by all means do that. I like to start with my light. This way, if I make a mistake, I can hide it. If I start with my darkest color and I mess it up, then um, I can't hide it. So this, you know, I, Alan will, will deny that this is true, but I consider myself a very logical thinker. <laughs> <laughs> logic tells me that if i start with light colors i can cover up any mistakes that i make well not any but most mistakes that i make and if i start with a really dark co cover color then it's going to be much harder to cover up because it's so dark right that's logic that's how my brain works this is also the way I learned to do it. I learned to start with the lightest color first. So there's my lightest color on that tree. That was G20. The next color I'm going to go to is going to be YG06. And I'm just going to start kind of flicking this color down. And I'm going to leave the ends of each layer of that tree in the lightest color. I'm going to come right up underneath there. Got to be kind of careful here. Just gently flick this color down. And I like seeing the strokes here. We may end up with strokes on it. We may not. Depends on how it goes, how it works. You know, I color things so that they look kind of cartoon-like. I don't go for a real, you know, kind of like a realistic look to it. Um, I like playful and whimsical. There we go. Let's just get up under here a little bit. You know, some of the areas, you may not be able to leave much of a light spot. And that's fine. I'm just going to get right around each of these uh, little ornaments. Get tucked right up underneath, right up against, I should say, not underneath. In my mind, it's up underneath where the, um, where the previous layer of the tree is. There we go. I'll just pull that out a little bit and leave those edges just a bit. All right. Then I'm going to go up one more to YG07. So that was YG06. This is 07. You can see here that there's a little bit of a difference. It's not a drastic difference, just a little bit. I'm going to go back over the same areas. And I'm just going to kind of chicken scratch in a little bit of this. But I'm going over most of it, but not all of it. So I'm not covering all the way to the end of each of those strokes. It's okay to leave some little areas a little bit brighter too. You know, if I don't cover it all up completely, that's fine. Especially around those little, like, those bulbs there. All right. And I am going to be doing some blending here, too, as I go. There we go. And I'm literally just touching down with the tip of the brush, pulling it out, and then lifting up as it pulls back. All right. Now I'm going to go to the lightest color, which is YG09. Darkest, I'm sorry. Darkest. I said lightest. I don't know what's wrong with me. All right, and I'm going to use this sparingly. I do want this green. I want the colors on this whole image to be bright. So I'm not going for like a really dark, dark, dark green. right up underneath where those kind of 
come together. And I like to have uneven lines as I'm pulling this color because it's easier to blend kind of a shaggy line rather than a, um, I'm gonna darken this at the bottom here too because we have things down here. It's easier to blend kind of a shaggy line than it is um, a straight line. Um, so now I'm gonna go so that was YG09. Now I'm going to go back to YG06. So I've gone down two colors, all right? I didn't go all the way down to the base. But I've gone down two colors. And all I'm going to do is kind of um, go over where these colors kind of come together just to soften those edges a little bit. just where the dark meets the lighter color underneath it. Softens that transition, but I'm not going all the way out to the end again. All right, so now I'm gonna go to my lightest color, which is G20. And I'm gonna kind of work up and down, pulling color down, pushing color up, why did I start in the middle? I don't know, that's where I went. <laughs> and I'm just gonna kind of scoot this around and push that color around. All right, I'm pulling down. Think of the color as though it's like wet on the page and I'm moving the dark down and pushing the light up. Move that darker color down, push the lighter color up, and it helps to blend it. And this is when I actually start to apply more pressure on the marker when it comes in contact with the page. Because I really want to move that color around. And I'm going to end up making some adjustments in here. Okay, because I want it to blend out a little bit better than it is in some areas. But I think it's coming out pretty good. It's a pretty good start. YG06 again. I'm going to pull color down so that it's not quite as yellow on those tips. All right, see how it blends it in a bit more? Notice I'm not starting all the way up where the dark color is. I'm just taking... YG06 and going over the lighter areas because I think they look a little too light. And in areas where maybe it didn't blend as well as I wanted, I'm going to bring some of this in because it's a medium kind of a color for me out of this whole color scheme that I've chosen here. But the areas that have a lot of that lighter color are still staying really light. There we go. And I'm going to stick with that. I think it looks pretty. I am going to do one little thing though. With 09, I want to go up to the very tops, up underneath where they meet, and just strengthen that green a bit, that darkest green, just a little bit. There we go. Adds a little more of a shadow to it, kind of like a little more depth. There we go. I think I'm going to leave that there. What do you think? How's it look? I love these. I, th I love these. I think that the tree looks like it's almost like it's kind of settled in. You know, like it was sat there. It sat there and it was all happy and everything. And after a little while it went, I'm just going to get comfortable. No, it just, it, it just, it looks like it sat down. It does. I, I just think it's super, super cute. <laughs> like it sat down. <laughs> I like that actually. I'm making myself laugh. Okay, so I've got some yellows here. I'm going to do, and this is I got my three yellows here. So I've got Y11. All right, I'm starting with that. I love Y11 because it's a really kind of a canary yellow, very bright. And then I go to Y15 or 15. Now, when I do this, I'm going to keep that 
Y11 in the center, I'm going to take this Y15 only on the tips of the star. And then that gives me that glow. Are we on camera three already? Yes. Okay. Oh, bummer. You want to zoom? Can we zoom more? You can if I go vertical. Oh. Now this one is Y19. I'm going to go right in those little corners of the star again. And I just think it gives that, um, it just makes it glow some more. Oh, my Alan, I don't know if you should do that. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Okay, so. You, all right, you're, oi, oi, oi. Which way are we going? Hold on. All right, that's it. You're going. No, you're good. Go a little bit more. Oh. Okay, good. Okay. All right, now the camera's so, moving. Oh, my gosh, the whole camera. <laughs> just get down because everything needs to settle. Okay, he just, we have an island in in the studio here and he just climbed up on it. <laughs> All right, let's see, let's make sure. Are we still in focus? I think so. All right, that that was pretty good, honey. Yeah, the, My hands look gargantuan. The crane is still moving. But... The crane's still moving? Okay. All right, so there we go. Oh, actually I need these out. I wanna also color some of these little bulbs on here on the tree. So um, I'm gonna color up, I'm just gonna kind of pick and choose. So this is Y11, um, and I'm just going to kind of uh, skip around so I don't have yellow all next to each other here. Um, hmm. Let's make this big one kind of yellow. And then let's do this one here. I'm going to have a lot of them yellow because I like the yellow on it. I think it's really bright. So that was 11 and this is 15. So I'm going to kind of pick a side and kind of come underneath it. I think this one's yellow. <laughs> All right, and that's going to help it to look bright on one side, it's gonna give it a glow. And then this is 19, which is even brighter. And I'm gonna just kind of stick that just a little bit on the underside there. And that's gonna to help to kind of give it that glow. All right, so it looks like it's got a little bit of a light shining there. I think it's pretty. Um, let's see, what else can we do uh, while we have yellow out? Um, Let's do some of these packages. I'm going to do yellow and red, yellow and blue maybe. Let's do this one here at the base here. And then I'm going to wrap this around. So there's some yellow. And then let's do this one in yellow. And then maybe this package back here will be yellow. This is how I do it when I'm coloring. So Y15. I'm going to bring that color in a little bit. Leave the center brighter. Hmm. We'll leave the centers brighter on all of these. Okay, so kind of bring this line down. Just gives it like a little bit of a shine. But you can see how easy these are to color. You don't have to add too much color. There we go. Just a little bit down the edge there. So this is 19. Click, fix that. Looks like it has a little bit of a glow. I think it's so pretty. It's such a pretty yellow combination. Isn't that nice? I like it. And I'm not even going to blend that in because I want that to, I want to see that big difference in color. And that's what makes it look, look like it's glowing or, or that it's got some shine to it. So I'm going to leave that. Next, I'm going to play with 
I'm going to play with some reds. So my red combination is R30 to start with. You can see I've got, this is my red combination. I had one of my colors was running out, so I ended up having to fill it, and I was playing with it to make sure it wasn't going to run all over, but we'll see what happens. Um, so I'm going to do some of these bulbs here now. I'm going to start with the lightest color, which is R30. Get this one here, and maybe this one, this one here, and let's do this one. All right, and then I'm going to get, I think I'm going to do this box in blue and yellow. So let's do this box in red. Anything I want red, I'm starting with R30. Let me make sure I don't get that little, what is that? Is that, a... oh, it's a little bear. I see him now. Um, with that, and then, you know what? I'm going to get, this is a stocking. So I'm going to get that with some red. And I'm going to space out my red a little bit and do some red over here. All right, so I have yellow, 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 red, red, red. You know what? I'm going to do another red back here. We're gonna have a lot of red on the boxes. That's okay. So my next color is R32. So this one, I'm actually just gonna color the whole thing in with R32. Because I don't really wanna see that pink kind of color except for down here on these little, the, the, um, the little baubles. I'm just going to go on the under, like on one side of those. Then everything else I'm going to cover it up. All right, and then my next color is R35. Now this one, I'm going to bring in And I am going to leave some kind of in the center here. I'll turn this. Just like a little highlight. We'll see how, we'll see how, it, if it, how it lands. See if I like it. What I may end up doing, actually, actually, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to color the whole thing in red. Because I think I'm going to like it better. And then I'm going to do some shadowing with my gray. just on the presence and on the stocking, because I really want a great red there. There we go. Oh, I forgot the underside of these. These I'm going to, I think I'm going to um, have to do a little bit of blending maybe on these, on the red. Just a tiny bit. Um, I'm going to do it, I think, with the lightest color. We'll see how this goes. Nope. I'm going to go with the next color up. So that's going to be R32. I'm going to blend that edge out a little bit just to, so it's not such a drastic transition from that yellow to pink. And then it's going to look more like a bright spot. That one I may have gone a little too dark on. But... We'll see. Okay, so what do we have left? Oi, oi, oi. Um, um, um. Hi, Betty. Huh? No, not yet. I've got blue here. This is a blue combination I have. So I've got B32. Here's my blues. I went, ended up, I didn't go with this one. I went with this blue over here because it was brighter. So it's B32. I'm going to do B32 on the rest of these baubles. What did you call it? Bauble. B-A-U-B-L-E. Baubles. It's a, what's a bauble? It's a, it's a, it's a uh, decoration? decoration, a Christmas bulb. Oh, that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's the real word. A bauble. 
B A U B L E. It's a real word. I'm sorry. I'm not making words up. My family thinks I make words up. I do not make words up. You guys are just a little crazy. This one, I love this little present here because it looks like it's a little drum. It's really cute. It's a baton formally used as an emblem by gestures. What? <laughs> what? It's a baton formally used as an emblem by gestures. Remember the gestures? Did you just look that up? I did. There's got to be more than one definition, you goofball. A small, showy trinket or decoration? Yes, a small, showy trinket or decoration, you goofball. <laughs> Trying to make me look bad. <laughs> this is usually cheap. <laughs> I know that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mister. You're going to have to get a your microphone on because people can't hear you. They don't I, I found out he does have a microphone. He just doesn't want to put it on. So he's messing with you guys. So I think you guys need to make Mr. Hunt put his microphone on. What do you say? Nope. Ornament. That's the right word. She ornament. Ornament. <laughs> I was being fancy. Sheila is correct. <laughs> I was being fancy. That's it. There you go. Uh, let me get this one over here. All I'm doing is just kind of adding a little bit of shadow in here to the blue. There we go. And then I, I promise you I will blend these in. B37 is next. One looks like U of M. Why did I do blue and gold? What was I thinking? That doesn't look like a Christmas gift. It's kind of weird. I don't know why I did that. I'm telling you, I'm off today. Things are just off. My color choices are off. There we go. All right, still have some things to color in here, but right now we're going to go to blending. So I'm going to go back to my lighter color here, which is B32. And I'm probably going to have to go mid-color, but we'll, we'll see. I'm going to see if I can blend these in a bit. So all I'm doing is scooting color around. Not really in circles, I wouldn't say. But see, it's not blending very well for me. So I'm going to go to my mid-color, which is B34. And let's see if I can... Soften that transition. So if you can't soften the transition, you go to your mid-range color. This is why we work with three colors when we're blending. Because you want the lightest color for those highlights. You want the darkest color for the shadows, right? And that middle color gives you that nice transition between them. No, the base color is the lightest color. But that's for shiny. Yes, but that's your base. That's where I start. That's my base anyway. Oh, oh. Not my best well, say what you mean. <laughs> mean what you say. Bobble. So, bobble, bobble. <laughs> All right, so let's see. That ended up being a very dark present. I don't know if I'm loving that, I got to say. It looks awfully dark. But you know what? To be honest with you, we're going to cover up a lot of that one when we get to bringing our um, our good little buddy in. And that's going to be this little guy here. So maybe it's good that we're going to have all this blue. I don't know. We'll see. I think it's a little more blue than I would I want. Perfect. You think it's perfect, honey? Yeah. Yeah. I told you I had a lot of stuff end up in the garbage today. I just, I don't know if I'm being too picky or if I'm just, I don't know what it is. Well, this is where we're going to go. That's where we're going to land with those. I'm not done yet. Don't worry. 
I am going to add some color to this little bear and I need to finish up a couple of things with the present. So I think I'm gonna add some yellow on this present because I think it's gonna be too much if I put blue on that ribbon and I don't want green. So I've got Y11. And then Y15. And then Y19 just very, very sparingly. This really sets that off. And I think that kind of finishes that. Now what are all of these little things? We have stuffs in here. These are like, those are little Christmas thingamajigs. Hmm. And I have a little bear I gotta deal with. So let's see. I'm going to start with my lightest color. This is what I'm going to use the same colors I used on the little boy for my bear. So I'm going to start with E50, E50. That just gives me a nice little beige base. He's really little, so I don't want to put too much color on him. <coughs> I do see one little bit of blue here that I missed from the lid. There we go. So that was E50, and then, let's see. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the same colors I did for the little boy. So this is E21, which is really what I use for like for skin tone, but it's gonna add like a little bit of beige, but it's like a pinky beige around this little bear. Just a little bit, leave some of the brighter areas. And then up to E42, this is what I used on the hair for the little boy. This is where we get a little bit more brown. And I'm just going to use that kind of like around the outside. Just to warm up that color a little bit on that bear. I'm not trying to do too much color on the bear because he's quite little. And then 43. Just to give him some warmth little bit in a few spots. That's our little bear. And I'm going to leave him. I'm not going to do any more. I like having those little highlights on him, but it, you know, it kind of, it lets you think he's, um, that he is, is brown. I'm seeing one little spot here where I think it's supposed to be red. And it's actually where the, um, there we go. It's where we have the, um, what is it called? The ribbon on the top of the blue box, but it's going in front of the red box. So I wanted to get that color in there because it looked a little weird. Um, we have the heel here that I think I'm going to do. I, I have all that green up at the top. I have no green down below. So I'm going to go back to my greens. I'm not going to start with G20. I am going to start with YG06 because this is such a small area. I'm not going to get a lot of color in. But YG06, and then I'm just going to try some YG07 just to kind of add a second color in there. It gives it a little bit of depth and leave it at that. Um, we still have to deal with those presents. What color? I, you know, I think I'm going to dab in some colors. I don't even know what those are. We don't really have toys in there. So, you know what? Let's try this. I've got a few different colors in here. I have this B0 one let's add a little bit of that in there maybe it's just maybe it's tissue paper i don't know i don't know i'm using a different um shade of blues this is i used b01 b02 and then b04 so this is a completely different color combination just for to set off the color a little bit and the reason I chose those is because that's what I have on the little boy's jammies. And so it brings that color in as well. So here's all of my markers. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, not all of them. Why? Here's four more that I hadn't shown you yet. Why what? Why do you so many colors in a little picture? I, well, because you can see. So the other colors that I used, I used on his hair were E44, which it's worn off. You can see it's a color I use a lot. E44, that was on his hair. 
And then I used um, the for the, um, oh my goodness, I want to call him an elephant. For the hippopotamus, I used C00, C01, and C03. And I know it's blurry. Oh, wait, look at that one. That one's focusing. So it's C03. Let's see if I can get them all to focus here. But... There we go. I just have to put them in the right spot. So I have them in the wrong, well, I should have them in the other order, but I'm not going to move them. C00, C1, and C3. That's what I used on the little hippo. Okay, so next up, we're going to put Alan to work. All right. Why don't you go out to camera two, honey? Okay, but I get paid either way, right? <laughs> What do you mean you get paid either way? I'm not cutting. I'm not cutting out the tree. We're gonna leave that. We're gonna cut these out here. So I've got. Which one is it? Where's the one where he's hugging? Why am I losing my mind here? It's. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he's got two little ears up at the top. Oh, it's right here. Goodness gracious. And then, I don't know if I'm gonna use this one or not, but we're gonna see. Um, where's my tape? And I've got a disclaimer, I use a lot of tape. I know people think I'm crazy. You think I'm crazy. I know people think I'm crazy for the amount of tape I use. And no, I do not reuse my tape. Um, I like to color once, and I wanna be done with the coloring. I don't want to have to color it multiple times. And this tape is not really strong. Um, the great thing about it not being really strong is it's not going to tear my image. It's not going to pull you know, any of the color up. It's not going to tear the paper. Uh, but it's also not going to stay very sticky for me to use it more than once. Um, and I don't want to have to recolor my images because I you know, didn't want to waste a little bit of tape. Um, I'd rather waste a little bit of tape and color one time. Now, Alan, I'm going to leave this here. And then we're also, we're going to get fancy. Uh, what could go wrong? All right. So I'm using my largest die. This is already sized to A2, but I'm going to have Alan, I want to cut it with the die because I want to have the stitch marks. Oops. <laughs> oopsie, oopsie. All right. So anybody who wants to yell at me for using tape, go ahead. I'm going to keep using as much tape as I do because um, I don't want to do this more than once. I end up wasting too much product, too much other product, and too much time if I don't use, if, if I worry about my tape. All right, so I have to tape this die into place on this because it's already been cut once. See how that's, that doesn't stay. All right. Put this down. All right, Alan, I'm going to give this to you. I hold this down. Hold that, squeeze that into place. Notice I put the blade side down. I put the blade side down because this, these are not intricate dies that we're cutting. Um, these dies are, um, you know, there's, they're not intricate. We don't have tons of little cuts all over these things. So it's not a big deal. Um, if it cuts down, if I, if it was an in intricate die, I would have the blade up because I would want that extra pressure on it. So here we go. Let me move this to the side. See, I didn't have it cut perfectly when I did it by hand. This is why you use dies. Um, oh, and these dies are back in stock, I should tell you. They were out of stock. They are back in stock. The uh, A2 stitch layered card toppers. Um, they tend to sell out quickly, so if you were at all interested in them, I would nab them. There we go. And you'll have a surprise someday. And what? Yeah. You're going to have a surprise? Oh, we do have a little surprise coming with these. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> Just to get everybody mad at him. All right, so here we go. 
got little pieces of lint on there. All right. All right. Um, I may have to have you do one more. We'll see. We shall see. I hadn't cut black as the second one. Uh, what's happening? Oh, it's, it's tape. See what I mean? The tape. Or oh, It's actually tearing my paper a little bit. <gasps> oh, yeah. Tore it a lot. Look at that. Uh, oh, I am... Yeah, but you know what? We're going to have another layer over it, so I don't think it's a big deal. We shall see. I will let you know. Uh, leave that there for a minute, honey. Let me get this off of here. It's not going to tear my Nina. I tore this. This is a that's a pretty lightweight cardstock. That's probably why it tore yeah. it. Paper always tears. Yeah. All right, let's see. There goes the star. There's that die, and everything's out there. Now, let me move these off to the side. So here's my little star, and here is my little hippo. Let's come in back to camera three, if you would, please, Alan. Because I want to see, let me get all the little bits of paper off of here. I want to see if I'm going to like this. Oh, you know what I don't have is a card base. What am I thinking? Would you give me one of those pieces of paper up there? Nope, right up there. I don't have my little pointy thing. Right up there. See where the black is? To the right of the black. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yep, right there. I need a card base. That's not a card base. That's a piece of paper. That's a piece of paper. So I'm going to cut a card. Oh, let's go to camera two because this is like huge. All right, so this is just a, it's just a letter size piece of paper, eight and a half by 11. I'm going to trim it to five and a half. This is for those of you that do not know how to make an A2 card base. So you trim to five and a half. And then I am going to turn it 90 degrees. And I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with scoring, when you score it, you're going to get like a little line that, go that goes into the paper, right? And I think a lot of people want to fold into that, but you actually fold away from it. When you fold away from it, that gives you a beautiful edge on your card. All right, so here we are. Now this is what I'm not sure of. I don't know if I wanna have black in between these. See how beautifully those line up? Let's go back to camera three, honey. See how beautifully these line up? We have just that little bit of space, and you can see the stitching there. And I can put this one here. Actually, I think I like it with the black. I think it's really pretty. And then I'm going to stamp a sentiment in black here. All right, we're going to go with it. You're not going to have to do any more die cutting. So the next step then is to stamp my sentiment. This is the last thing. I better get it right because I've already colored this. <laughs> Wouldn't it just be just like me to mess it up at this point? So I'm going to actually stamp, I'm hippopotamusing you because I think that is adorable. And I want that to go right on here. Ooh, and then there's something else I just thought of doing really cute, really quickly too. See if I can not put my head in the camera. I'm going to move this down here. Hippopotamusing you. Make sure that's right in the corner. Pick that up. I've got my Raven Hybrid Ink ready to go. Get this inked up. First time I'm stamping with this stamp, so I might have to stamp it more than once. I've got my Stampendable ready to go. So I apply even pressure. And look at that. Ah, there's a couple of spots. Brand new stamp. I should have rubbed my finger over it. It tends to work better if I remove, you know, whatever the, the factory leaves on it. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm hippopotamusing you. Stampendables, by the way, are back in stock. Um, 
at stores all over the place. Um, I want you guys to, you know, make sure you check out your favorite craft stores um, because all of these items that I'm using today are in your home stores. Um, and uh, they have restocked Stampendables. They've restocked a lot of the items that, that we've got here. If there is an item that you want that your home store is not carrying, uh, let them know. Let them know. They don't know, you know necessarily what you want to see unless you let them know. So, all right, so Hippopotamusing you. I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna actually add, I'm gonna ground this because it looks like it's floating. So I'm using my gray, this is C00. And I'm just adding like a little bit of, like a little bit of shadow onto it a bit. I'm starting with C00 a bit, just to kind of map it out. And then I'm going to come in with C1 and just kind of bring some of that around with C1 just to kind of deepen some of that shadow. I don't do a real strong like flat line on it. I extended it because I'm going to have uh, my little characters and I'm not making this real heavy either. Just a little bit so it looks like, looks like it's on the ground, right? Blend some of that out a little bit. That's where I'm going to pop my characters in there. Um, let me get my foam tape and we're going to start building. All right. I don't think I scored that very well. Move on the other side. <laughs> I think my scoring was off a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and lay this flat onto my card base. This is just the card topper in white. There we go. And then Yep, I'm going to put this flat to the black. Get this centered best I can. And then I'm going to pop this up on some foam because I'm crazy about having dimension on my card. go one in the middle and then where's the end let me leave that out because I'm gonna need it all right so that should give me enough stability Valerie is asking when will I be back on HSN well there is a story there but you know, with all the shipping issues that are going on in the world, I was actually supposed to be on in October and um, supposed to be on in November. And our product is not arriving. Still, Still hasn't arrived. So they, we just had the October HSN show and my stuff, our product uh, for the October show um, finally landed here in the United States. Um, but I don't have it. it. hasn't made its way to Michigan yet. So um, long story, is, or the short end of it, is that I will be on in January. Um, let's see. Okay, so I have foam on the back of my little guy here. And I'm going to pop him up right here. there and let me see do I want to put that I like that so yeah I'm going to cover up the star that I colored there and I'm going to put this one there instead because I like the dimension oh let's do it this way there we go I like the dimension so there we go
So moral of the story is when your creativity is not working out, go back to basics. Go back to basics. That's what this is. It's simple stamping, coloring, simple die cutting, simple layers, um, and it's just, it's beautiful and I love it. And I'm so thrilled that I was able to accomplish this today. <laughs> you have no idea how much work went into this. <laughs> this part was easy. All right. You want to go back to the uh, camera one, please? Misto? <laughs> so yes, this card seemed to take me about three hours. <laughs> In reality, this card didn't take me long at all. Um, but it was everything that I had to get through and throw out today before I went back to basics. Basics, and sometimes going back to basics is just where you need to be. So this part was fun. This was relaxing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love coloring, um, and I think it turned out really cute. I think it's just beautiful. I love it. Yay! I've been dying to work with these stamps, too. I don't know why I haven't worked with them sooner. So um, anyway, so today's giveaway, can you guess what it's going to be? Today's giveaway is going to be the Hippopotamus Stamps and Dies. Yay! I never would have guessed. <laughs> you never would have guessed? No. All right. So hopefully you guys oh, have got some sort of a comment out there so we know that you're there. Alan is going to choose um, a name. I'm going to give get a little camera shot here. <laughs> That's going to be for the cover. Okay. Yeah, I need a name, mister. I'm trying to Mr. Hunt. I, I need a second here. I'm not a robot. Yeah, I'm not a robot. I'm an important human being. <gasps> Valerie Beatty. Valerie, you are today's winner. Yay, you won the Hippopotamus for Christmas stamps and dies so you can create your own adorable I want a Hippopotamus for Christmas card. Yay. Congratulations, Valerie. I need you please to send your name and your complete mailing address. Send it to customer service at ldrscreative.com and we will get your Hippopotamus for Christmas stamps and dies out to you right away. Yay! Woo -woo. <laughs> All right, everybody, that is it for tonight. Um, don't forget to, if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, give us some likes and so on and so forth and uh, all that helps us and you will uh, also get um, a notification when we go live in your email. You can also subscribe to our blog, to our inspiration blog. Uh, you'll find that on the, the, uh, the home page of our website. Don't forget we're going to be back every Thursday night right here at 7 p.m. Eastern and um, hopefully I will have uh, an easier time crafting next week. Hopefully we got, hopefully I got all of the, all of the little issues out of the way today. Um, have a wonderful weekend. I will see you guys in a week. Bye for now. Thanks so much.